Life is beautiful. The biological life cycle is one of the most astounding components of the natural world and applies to every single living creature on this planet. When an organism is born, the clock counts down the time until it ultimately must perish. Oftentimes, this also applies to the entire species. We call this concept extinction. As grave as it sounds, it's the ultimate truth, and we must be wary of this. Whether it be from natural causes or mankind's interference, we have several species of animal on this earth that are nearing their extinction. For today, we have 10 animals that are about to go extinct. If you cry easy, grab yourself a tissue box real quick, because you won't be able to hold it back for our number one. With all that said and done, let's begin, shall we? Number 10. The Peacock Parachute Spider Also known as the Guti Sapphire Ornamental, the Peacock Parachute Spider is truly one of a kind. Featuring a very distinct blue sapphire-like color, the Peacock Parachute Spider is native to India, with its first recorded sighting around 1899. This tarantula's color is not its only premier feature. When grown to full size, females' leg span can reach up to 8 inches, and that's big enough to cover your entire plate at the dinner table. With its size and color combined, the Peacock Parachute Spider looks like it crawled directly out of an alien movie. Not to worry though, the Peacock Parachute Spider's bite has not ever been known to kill a human, and resorts to fleeing before attacking confrontations. Spinning funnel webs is its primary method of hunting and collecting prey, the Peacock Parachute Spider is known to be a pest killer. Its diet mainly consists of various flying insects including mosquitoes, flies, and cockroaches. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a stunning advertisement to help save them. Being in high demand in the pet trade, the Peacock Parachute Spider's population has been dwindled down to critically endangered levels. Its habitat is now considered a reserve forest in India where all activities, including hunting, are prohibited. This effort was established in 1929 in order to protect the delicate ecosystem that is home to India's stunning wildlife. Number 9. The Chinese Giant Salamander Definitely not as attractive as our previous guest, but just as interesting and endangered, the Chinese giant salamander is one of the largest salamanders in the world. It is also known as a living fossil, which means it possesses features only known to species found in fossil records. That means this big guy is a direct descendant of ancient animals that have never been seen by humans. As said before, the Chinese giant salamander is a member of the largest salamanders on the planet. Weighing in around 60 pounds and measuring at about 3 feet long, this salamander is bigger than your average dog. Just imagine taking one of these guys for a walk around the block. Probably wouldn't be too popular with your HOA. Though you might find yourself in a familiar situation if anything were to spook your slimy steed, because these salamanders have been known to make barking, whining, hissing, and crying sounds. The population of the Chinese giant salamander has declined by 80% since the 1950s and this is due to habitat destruction and overhunting. This is due in part to being considered a delicacy, as well as part of traditional Chinese medicine. It's unfortunately fallen to critically endangered status. Number 8. Javan Green Magpie On the Indonesian island of Java lives the Green Magpie. With its radiant green feathers, stout orange beak, and signature eyeline, the Javan Green Magpie is a really unique bird. Its bright green color comes from the yellow pigment it consumes via its insect diet. The Javan Green Magpie also has been found feasting on small lizards as well as some frogs. Initially blue at birth, the Javan Green Magpie grows and molts its feathers to grow its signature green feathers. Its beak also lacks much pigment at birth, maintaining this appearance until it matures. Though it has been recorded that the magpie can even revert back to its blue coloring in captivity if its diet is not sufficient. Habitat loss and illegal capture have decimated this population to critically endangered levels. Being popular as an exotic pet, some experts believe the Javan Green Magpie's wild population is down to less than 50 members. Fortunately though, captive breeding efforts have brought its captive population to at least 50 in an effort to one day enhance the wild's population. Number 7. The Asian Softshell Turtle Also native to the island of Java is the Green Magpie's neighbor, the Asian Softshell Turtle. If you've never seen or heard of a softshell turtle, you might want to look closely, as softshell turtles appear very different from your typical pond or river-dwelling turtles. Just as the name suggests, our guests do not have a dense, hard shell like one would assume a turtle might possess. Its body is much softer and smoother, giving it a distinct flat appearance and don't let its soft and squishy form fool you. The Asian softshell is an unwavering carnivore. 
As an ambush predator, it often spends its time buried at the bottom of its freshwater home, waiting for its next meal to come by. The Asian softshell is of exceptional size when it comes to softshell turtles. Growing to more than 3 feet in length and more than 200 pounds, the Asian softshell is of the largest softshell turtles in the world. Unfortunately though, this big guy's population has fallen to endangered levels and is no longer found in the same regions of Cambodia it was once in abundant. Number 6. The Dama Gazelle Let's move on to a different region of the world, Africa. The wildlife of the African continent presents some of the most unique and popular examples of complete savagery. Every corner of the African safari presents another species that would like to eat you in a different way. Lions, crocodiles, hyenas, oh my, you name it. Africa is a hard place to live, especially if you're our number six. Considered to be the largest of all gazelle species, the Dama gazelle grows to be about four feet in height and is capable of keeping up with the rest of its pack just a few days after birth. Give it a week and the new offspring are capable of running as fast as full-grown adults. The Dama gazelle inhabits regions in the northernmost region of sub-Saharan Africa. This also appears to be where lions reside, so their speed is quite the useful attribute. Despite this life-saving survival ability, the Dama gazelle's population has fallen 80% in the past decade. This is most in part due to drought, habitat loss, and overhunting. The Dama gazelle has fallen to a critically endangered level. Tourism has also exacerbated this issue as tourists make constant efforts to get pictures with the animals, thus spooking them. This causes them to stress, require more water, and inevitably perish from dehydration. Number 5. Hawksbill Sea Turtle Let's dive deep into the ocean for our number 5. Being a sea turtle, the Hawksbill Sea Turtle is one of the most widely known endangered species. The information of their status is highly proliferated throughout popular media, and rightly so. The hawksbill has fallen to critically endangered levels and is protected all around the world. It's guarded so much it's prohibited to even approach one. Acquiring its name from its beak-like mouth, the hawksbill sea turtle uses its hardened, pointy beak to bite off chunks of bioluminescent coral. This dietary feature leads to the hawksbill forming a bioluminescent or glow-in-the-dark appearance. This characteristic is not seen in any other reptile, making it the only known reptile to possess such a feature. The scales and shell of the hawksbill have been used for decorative clothing for centuries, dating as far back as ancient Egypt. Along the southeastern Asian coast, stuffed hawksbills and decorated shells were readily available for purchase as late as 2006. Current conservation efforts and prohibitions have resulted in a massive stop to this practice, and once again, rightly so. Number 4. The Orange-Bellied Parrot Let's take a flight over to Australia, where our colorful number four lives. Residing in southern Australia, but breeding in western Tasmania, the orange-bellied parrot does not exactly give us the typical appearance we expect out of a parrot. It's rather small compared to most parrots, but it is just as colorful. The males are typically adorned with bright green feathers and head, accentuated with blue on the tips of its wings. The cheek feathers mesh with its chest and abdomen's bright yellow. And it also includes a tuft of orange on its belly just in between its legs. All of this plays on its dainty 8-inch long frame. We have the perfect recipe for a cuteness overload. On the much less bright and frilly side, the orange-bellied parrot has taken quite the beating when it comes to population. Once a thriving population ranging from Sydney to Adelaide, the numbers have dwindled and are no longer at the abundant level they once were. Until 1967, these colorful little creatures were a regular visitor of Port Ferry. Reports say the reasons for their declining numbers include disorientation from brightly lit fishing vessels, introduced invasive species, and degradation of habitat. On a slightly more positive note, though, the captive breeding program has captured 310 specimens as an opportunity to help ensure their genetic diversity and population moving forward. Number 3. The Sumatran Tiger The most fearsome guest thus far, the Sumatran Tiger is very critically endangered. When ecosystems start experiencing loss of habitat for animals nearing the bottom of the pyramid, the animals stacked on top also start to suffer. Not to mention the fur trade and illegal poaching has also inhibited the Sumatran tiger from effectively proliferating its species. This has resulted in less than 700 individual Sumatran tigers being alive today. Another cause for the Sumatran tiger's decline is the rapid deforestation and efforts to build palm oil plantations. Sumatra has consistently been tearing down the forests of its outer regions to build plantations, thus destroying the natural habitat of one of the world's largest predators. 2013 and 2014 brought about a large increase in poaching as the highest recorded amount of snare traps were removed from Kerinci Serbalt National Park. 
In an effort to help conserve and restore the population of these majestic beasts, Indonesia initiated several efforts to help conserve their habitat and help build their population back up. The Tambling Wildlife Nature Conservation, a 110,000 acre area and rehabilitation center was established to provide a place where the natural ecosystem can remain undisturbed and help rehabilitate injured wildlife back into the natural world. Number 2. Vaquita Endemic to the Gulf of California, the vaquita is the smallest of all aquatic mammals. Fully grown females reach less than 6 feet in length and can be easily identified by its unusually tall and triangular dorsal fin. Their heads are very round and possess no beak, unlike most dolphins. Its habitat is limited to a small northern portion of the Gulf of Mexico, factoring heavily into the reason for its endangered status. Being restricted to such a confined area does not give it adequate space to proliferate its species and subjects more of its individuals to pollution exposure, illegal fishing practices, and becoming bycatch. Efforts to help reduce the decline of vaquita by the Mexican government includes gill net bans, encouraging fishers to replace their nets with vaquita safe fishing nets, and even enabling fishermen to surrender their fishing license in exchange for another career. I saved the best for last, but first, I have a quick challenge that takes only 5 seconds to complete. If you can leave a like and subscribe within the next 5 seconds, you'll get 10 years of amazing luck. Just try it, it really works. Number 1 the Northern White Rhinoceros Our number one is the most tragic of all these situations. While the rest of our guests are not completely extinct, they all at least have a chance considering the efforts that have been put in place for them. Unfortunately for the Northern White Rhinoceros, this is not the case. You see, the Northern White Rhino has only two members of their entire species left, and they are both female. Originally grazing the lands of eastern and central sub-Saharan Africa, the northern white rhinoceros is functionally extinct. They cannot further reproduce, and they will inevitably become extinct. The population of white rhinos severely declined from 500 to just 15 individuals during the 1970s and 1980s. The last known surge of the white rhino's population was from the early 1990s to mid-2003, when the population rose to over 32 members, but has since suffered an increased intensity of poaching. That has left us with the two last remaining northern white rhinoceroses in the world. If you would like to find out more about what you can do to help all of these and the rest of the endangered species in the world, consider checking out this list of organizations dedicated to helping bring back our friends. Also, consider checking out your local wildlife refuges and parks. They're typically donation-based and depend on passionate individuals to help reduce the human footprint in the natural world. These organizations are the worldwildlife.org, the Wildlife Alliance and the African Wildlife Foundation. Check them out in the description below. With all that said and done, I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody.